Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Alphabet Inc, aka Google, ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L and G-O-O-G. So there are two classes of Alphabet slash Google stock. One of them has voting rights, which is G-O-O-G-L, and the other one just has economic rights, G-O-O-G. At the time of recording this video, Alphabet is trading at about $2,250 per share. Throughout the video, I'll probably be flipping back and forth between calling it Alphabet or Google. Don't mind it. We can see by looking at the chart that Alphabet is down 22% year to date. Over the past year, they're down about 5.5%. Going back 10 years, Google, even with this recent decline, is still a monster, returning 22.5% compounded annually. And going all the way back to 2005, Google has returned 20% even compounded annually each year. So an absolute monster when it comes to long-term stock performance. Scrolling down, we can see that Google has been trading between two and $3,000, and currently they're nearer to that 52-week low mark. Google is a massive business. They have a market cap of nearly $1.5 trillion. So Google is one of the top five largest businesses in the world. Google does not pay any dividends. And for some background about the business, Alphabet is a holding company with Google, the internet media giant, as a wholly owned subsidiary. Google generates 99% of Alphabet revenue, of which more than 85% is from online ads. Google's other revenue is from the sale of apps and content on the Google Play Store and YouTube, as well as cloud service fees and other licensing revenue. Sales of hardware such as Chromebooks, the Pixel smartphone, and smart home products, which include Nest and Google Home, also contribute to other revenue. Alphabet's moonshot investments are in its other bet segments, where it bets on technology to enhance health, like Verily, faster internet access to homes such as Google Fiber, self-driving cars through its Waymo division, and more. Alphabet's operating margin has been between 25 and 30%, with Google at 30%, and its other bets operating at a loss. The company was founded in 1998 by Larry Page and Sergey Brin and is headquartered in Mountain View, California. So with that background of what the business does and how they make money, let's get right into our fundamental analysis. We'll be performing an eight pillar analysis as popularized by Everything Money to look at eight different metrics to get a holistic beginning understanding of Google as a business solely based off its financials. So let's get right into it. Starting off, we want Google's average five-year PE to be below 22 and a half. Currently, Google is trading at a 20 times earnings multiple. Over the past five years, this is averaged at about 34 times. So even though this is gonna be an X to start off, I'm not worried about this, and Google is currently below this metric. So that's a good sign here, even though pillar number one is an X. Their price to earnings has been reasonably trending down almost this entire period. Pillar number two, we want Google's average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. So Google has averaged pretty high returns on capital since its inception. They have a very high operating margin, and so this translates into a return on capital of about 19% over the past five years. So over the long run, a stock is going to perform just about as well as its underlying business will perform. And business returns are going to be based on this return on capital. So that's our first check on pillar number two. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. Even for being a massive business, Google's revenues have exploded over the past five years, helped along in part by the pandemic. They've grown revenues from a base of $111 billion in 2017 to nearly $258 billion in 2021. Those are just absolutely massive numbers, and this is still massive growth. So that's a check on pillar number three. Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. Here, it's the same story as revenue. They've had massive growth. They've grown net income from about $13 billion in 2017 to nearly $76 billion in 2021. Huge growth here. Huge check on pillars three and four. Pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. We don't want a business to be diluting existing shareholders. Dilution ultimately means that a shareholder would have a smaller ownership stake in the business and would be entitled to less of the business's profits over time. So here we're seeing that they are decreasing shares outstanding. 
So they've decreased shares outstanding from 704 million in 2017 to just about 678 million in 2021. So a very strong business like Google that has a lot of cash on its balance sheet is starting to buy back its shares, especially in these recent years where it looks like their valuation has become more and more reasonable. Ultimately, what these share buybacks mean is that existing shareholders now own even more of Alphabet. So that's a great sign here. Another check on pillar number five. Pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. So free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. It's the lifeblood of any business. It can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, and reinvest back in the business. So free cash flow is this column in green. And we can see that similar to net income and revenues, this has doubled over the past five years. In Alphabet's free cash flow profile, we get to see one of the true hallmarks of a great business. They've kept their capital expenditures nearly flat over the last four years, and during that time, they've pretty much doubled their cash from operations. So Google is just absolutely gushing off free cash flow at this point. That's a wonderful sign, and that's a check on pillar number six. Averaged out over this time period, Google produces about $37.5 billion of free cash flow in an average year. So just an absolutely staggering number, and there's really less than five companies in the world that are able to match this. So we'll be using that average five-year free cash flow for pillar seven, how we're evaluating the use of leverage in Google's business, and pillar eight, how we're comparing that to their market cap. So pillar number seven, we want Google's net debt to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. Google has $111 billion of negative net debt. So what this means is net debt is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term equivalents. So when it's a negative number, that means that Google has $111 billion in cash and short-term equivalents on their balance sheet. So they're sitting on a ridiculous amount of cash right now, pretty close to the amount that Berkshire Hathaway holds in float on its balance sheet. So just an absolutely massive check here on pillar number seven. It's pretty hard for a business to be worth more than $100 billion. And for Google to just have it sitting on their balance sheet is absolutely amazing. To put perspective on this, after paying off all their liabilities, Google has enough cash on hand to buy Netflix in cash. So pretty amazing there. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want Google's market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. So Google currently has a $1.5 trillion market cap, multiplying their average five-year free cash flow of $37.5 billion times five brings us to $750 billion. So that is going to be an X on pillar number eight. Even when you back off that extra cash on their balance sheet, they're still off by about $500 billion. So in summary, Google checks the box on six out of eight pillars. They're an absolutely staggeringly large business that's still growing very rapidly. They're still earning really high returns on capital. They've got an ironclad balance sheet with more than $110 billion of cash on it. They're growing free cash flow like crazy and they're starting to buy back their shares. Their only two X's came on their valuation pillars, even though they're currently trading for below that PE that we're looking for, and their free cash flow profile has progressively improved over the last five years. So they checked the box on six out of eight pillars for our eight pillar analysis. And remember, that's just the starting point for how to think of Google holistically as a business. Now, another thing that I wanna do is take a look at a discounted cash flow model of Google. So all businesses are worth the sum of all future cash flows discounted back to the present day by some reasonable interest rate. If we can figure out the value of those future cash flows discounted back, we should want to pay a price well below that. So looking at Google's discounted cash flow calculator, by doing this, we're trying to calculate an intrinsic value for Alphabet slash Google. So a discounted cash flow model, similar to any other mathematical model, is totally dependent on your inputs, and you can change these all up or down, and you can pretty much see anything you're willing to see. So because of that, I wanna keep this very straightforward and pretty simple. We're gonna follow Benjamin Graham's advice, which is if Google's businesses perform as they did over the past 10 years, over the next future 10 years, what is Google's value gonna be based on that, right? So according to this, Google's grown their free cash flow by 17.6% per share per year. 
So if we put that number in as our growth rate over the next 10 years, and then we have a terminal value of a growth of about 4% over those future 10 years, we can see here that this is their free cash flow per share. And then adding tangible book value, we get that if we discount this back at a rate of 15%, so a 15% rate of return, there's just about a 1% margin of safety here. So this higher than average discount rate is also going to be part of our margin of safety. If Google's business performance in the future 10 years is the exact same as it was in the past 10 years, then you can reasonably expect Google to earn about a 15% return for you at this current price. This is not a recommendation to go out and buy Google stock. Remember that this eight pillar analysis and this discounted free cash flow, these are just starting points. And so maybe this gets you a little more interested in Google as a business. Ultimately, if you wanna learn more about Google, you really have to do the work and dive into a 10K, read through their annual report, and come to your own understanding of the business's competitive advantages or weaknesses, and ultimately come to the perspective of can you get a reasonable idea of what Google's business is gonna look like 10 years from now? Remember that you have to do your own homework and that this is not a buy or a sell recommendation. And so it's ultimately up to us as individual investors to do the work and come to our own valuation of the business. Well guys, that's it for today's stock analysis of Alphabet Inc, AKA Google, ticker symbols G-O-O-G-L and G-O-O-G. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what kind of business you want me to take a look at next. Thanks for learning about Google with me, and have a great day.